Hello, welcome to our weekly devotions at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. I'm Pastor David Schub, and as you hear this, you will be just finishing up Christmas, probably in the process of packing everything up and cleaning up the house. And so as we begin these devotions, we hear from the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven... The shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Well, right after Christmas, it seems like we just want to roll everything up and get back to life. All the Christmas stuff is out of the stores, probably by now, and they're putting up stuff for New Year's and Valentine's Day. Um, It's almost as if Christmas hadn't happened there. My mom used to love to listen to this kind of humorous song called I Yes Go Nuts at Christmas. It kind of harkened back to her uh, Swedish heritage. It was a song about the crazy nature of Christmas in a unique sort of strange family setting. And near the end was the line, Oh, I'm so glad Merry Christmas comes yes once a year. I've heard a similar sentiment from lots of people around me, and let's face it, Christmas can be exhausting. So for many, it's a time to clean things up, leave Christmas in the rearview mirror until next year. And that's perfectly understandable. And yet, in the gospel today, we read these powerful words. Mary treasures all these things and pondered them in her heart. I'm sure the birth in Bethlehem was no picnic, and yet for Mary, that birth meant everything was different. Her words of the Magnificat in chapter 1 of Luke's gospel express the same reality. Christmas is not meant to be yes one time a year. I've been deeply moved by the powerful words of the black preacher and brilliant thinker Howard Thurman. He wrote words that have become famous. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, The work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among siblings, to make music in the heart. Truth is that we need Christmas to be with us always, to drive us ever more deeply into new life each and every day. The great medieval thinker Meister Eckhart said, we all need to be mothers of God because God is always needing to be born. Yes, continuing Christmas every day will be exhausting. It will push us to the very limits of who we are called to be, and yet that's what Christmas is meant to do. Jesus came, according to the verses we read from the Gospel of John, the very first week of these devotions in December, so that all might have life and have it abundantly. If that's true, then we have a great deal of work to do. Maybe we don't have clear answers as to how to change the world situation, but if we are not thinking about it and struggling with it constantly in our lives, then how can we say that we embrace the new understanding that Christmas brings? I found this story always a fascinating story. Long ago, a man sought the perfect picture of peace. Not finding one that satisfied, he announced a contest to produce this masterpiece. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere, and paintings arrived from far and wide. Finally, the great day of revelation arrived. The judges uncovered one peaceful scene after another while the viewers clapped and cheered. The tension grew. Only two pictures remained veiled. As the judge pulled the cover from one, a hush fell over the crowd. A mere smooth lake reflected lacy 
green birches under the soft blush of the evening sky. Along the grassy shore, a flock of sheep grazed undisturbed. Surely this was the winner. The man with the vision uncovered the second painting himself, and the crowd gasped in surprise. Could this be peace? A tumultuous waterfall cascaded down a rocky precipice. The crowd could almost feel its cold, penetrating spray. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explode with lightning, wind, and rain. In the midst of the thundering noises and bitter chill, a spindly tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. One of its branches reached out in front of the torrential water as if foolishly seeking to experience its full power. A little bird had built a nest in the elbow of that branch, content and undisturbed in her stormy surroundings. She rested on her eggs. With her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones, she manifested peace that transcended all earthly turmoil. Christmas is made real, not in the isolated and controlled season of Christmas, but in the tempestuous, rushing, changing course of life. It's in those moments that peace, that peace of Jesus' presence is most deeply needed and most deeply felt. Someone years later added to the verses from Howard Thurman these lines. And so to radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do, and in all that we say, then the work of Christmas begins. Yes, Christmas can be nuts, as the song says, and everyone has a right to be tired at the end of the season, but Christmas is meant to be so much more. It's meant to be a part of all we do and say. Because Christmas was the beginning of a life that would lead to a cross. It didn't just end there. One of the most powerful Christmas cards we ever got had on the cover the manger with the shadow from the beams of the manger making a cross on the child. The work of Christmas had just begun. As our closing prayer, I invite you to go to YouTube and listen to a song by Josh Wilson called Once a Year. The link is listed on these devotions. And I wish you a blessed Christmas now and throughout the year. Have a good post-Christmas Christmas. Christmas. (laughs)